Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. This news in the streets. Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Crimes and criminals define not only places, but certain time periods. Serial killers are usually the ones that individuals tend to remember the most. An individual is considered a serial killer when they have killed three or more individuals during a period of time with a cooling off period in between each crime. According to an FBI study, there have been approximately 400 serial killers in the United States in the past century, with anywhere from 2,526 to 3,860 victims total. No one really understands serial killers because it is quite difficult to comprehend how the mind of a serial killer works. The Jeffrey Dahmer situation is things that nightmares are made of. It's a truly horrifying case when it comes to American serial killers. There's just something really dark and sinister about a man who can kill over 17 different people and have absolutely no guilt or shame about it. And with the new Netflix series on the rise, it's no wonder that so many people have started talking about Jeffrey Dahmer I again. Say I'm sorry. She gonna open your gift? So today, instead of just discussing Jeffrey Dahmer, I want to speak on the woman who tried her hardest to stop him. Her name was Glenda Cleveland. So hello and welcome back to Lovely TTV. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe down below. Glenda Cleveland was Dahmer's neighbor whose persistent attempts to stop him were basically ignored by the police, but she's been thrusted back into the spotlight. Glenda Cleveland was portrayed by phenomenal actress Niecy Nash in the Netflix series. She was very crucial to the Dahmer case. The police were right there and they walked him right back into Jeffrey Dahmer's apartment. Glenda was one of nine children, and she was raised on a farm by her parents, who stressed the importance of telling the truth and stepping up when somebody needs help. She worked in a data entry position in the city of Milwaukee while living with her 17-year-old daughter, Sandra Smith. Cleveland was not Dahmer's next-door neighbor at the Oxford apartment. In reality, she lived in an adjacent building. The actual neighbor was another black woman named Pamela Bass be doing all this kind of stuff right over here, right in the midst where there are all these people that you got neighbors, you got senior citizens living downstairs, eating body parts. I have eaten a sandwich from you. I have probably eaten someone's body part. How dare you do this to me? So one fateful night in May of 1991, Glenda's niece, Nicole Childress, stated that her and Glenda's daughter, Sandra Smith, they had stumbled upon the dazed and confused 14-year-old Conrad synthophone. And basically, he was trying to escape Dahmer's apartment. And despite being heavily drugged and injured, Conrad was able to regain consciousness and wander into the streets for help. When the police arrived on the scene, they chalked up the incident to a lover's spat, despite pleas from the woman to help Conrad. The police and Domner walked Conrad back into Domner's apartment, where he was later murdered shortly afterwards. Nicole goes on to tell the press this. She says, we try to give the policeman our names, but he just told us to butt out. I couldn't understand why he didn't want our names. I said, what are you going to do about this? This is just a at the young Laotian boy. It all happened about 1230 in the morning of May 27th, that's when Tina Spively says she and her friend saw Conrad Sintison phone stumble and fall onto State Street. They ran up to him and noticed that he was bleeding from behind, and he appeared to be drugged at that time as well. That's allegedly when Jeffrey Dahmer grabbed at the boy, and Tina says she confronted him. I was right up on him. I'm trying to threaten him, to, you know, to let him go. We're like, we're going to bust you in your stuff. Turn him loose. He don't want to be with you. Leave him alone. And then my cousin was like, just get out of it. It's none of your business. I said, but still, he needs help. I said, look at him doing like they get him some dope or something. Spivey's friend called police. By the time they arrived, Dahmer had allegedly carried Citizen Bone to this alley just off the 25th and State. But Spivey says the two officers quickly asked them to leave. Unlike the Netflix series, Glenda was not present when her daughter and her niece found Conrad. 
When Glenda was alerted about the incident by her daughter and her niece, she went on to call the police station. She called numerous times and she tried to get more information, find out what happened to the young man. And she was met with nothing but resistance and dismissal from the police officers. In the now infamous phone conversation, you can hear Glenda Cleveland basically inquiring to a police officer about investigating Dahmer. Glenda called again later on that evening and police officer John Bazarak answered and Glenda's concerns were repeatedly dismissed by him. He also reassured her that Conrad was a mature adult and that the altercation was merely a fight between a gay couple. Hers was the voice of insistence, the voice of concern, the voice that fell on deaf ears. Tonight, Glenda Cleveland relives the frustration of being shut out by a police operator as she insisted the person being beaten was a child. When I say what I have to say and I know it to be true, I don't feel that I have to constantly keep repeating myself. And I think that can be said for everyone. Glenda Cleveland remembers the day Connor Rack died, remembers the police assurances that everything was okay. Did you start to doubt yourself? I must admit I did. I did. But do you feel they let that boy down that night? Yes, they did. Yes. Yes, he was definitely let down. He was let down as low as he could get. And that was to his grave. He can't get much lower than that. Now, if the police would have taken Glenda's concern seriously, they would have known that Jeffrey Dahmer had actually molested Conrad's older brother prior to the incident, but they refused to listen to her. Later on in the same year, Dahmer was arrested, and he was arrested after he met a man at the bar and invited him over to the house. The man's name was Tracy Edwards. Fortunately for Tracy, he was able to escape Dahmer and call the police. This was what ended Jeffrey Dahmer's murdering spree. Tracy Edwards reported to the police that Dahmer had kidnapped him and made death threats at his apartment. The officers returned Edwards to Dahmer's apartment, even though they really didn't believe the story that he was telling them. The officers nearly believed Jeffrey Dahmer when he calmly explained that everything had been a mistake. However, while digging through his room, they found Polaroid images of several bodies, and that is what led to Dahmer's capture. Following Dahmer's arrest five months later, the Cleveland police contacted Glenda. She was given formal honors by the Common Council and the County Board and celebrated by a local women's group, and even the Milwaukee Police Department also gave her an award. Reverend Jesse Jackson came to visit and speak with her, telling reporters at the time that the police chose the word of a killer over an innocent woman. In spite of all the attention, Glenda just wanted to get back to normal. It was a statement that she had repeated to many reporters that showed up at her door asking her about Jeffrey Dahmer. She ended up returning to her data entry position until her retirement and helped her daughter take care of her children. And what is seen as a touch of irony, it was the Milwaukee police officers acting on a citizen's tip who entered Cleveland's apartment only to discover her body on the floor. Neighbors had become concerned after not seeing her for a few days. The medical examiner's office ruled that it was a natural death caused by heart disease and high blood pressure. Glenda Cleveland passed away on December 24th, 2010 at the age of 56. And even though Glenda is gone, her legacy is still very evident. Actress Niecy Nash, who played her in the Netflix series, had a lot of great things to say about Glenda. She said, if anything, I would want people to know that Glenda Cleveland was special. That was a special woman to continue on and on in an effort to get someone to do something. She deserved way more than a cheesy plaque in the bottom of a social hall somewhere. And I want people to know that we all know or have been or will be a Glenda Cleveland in this life. And that's for sure. So with that being said, while there is a lot of hype on Jeffrey Dahmer and, you know, his actions and what he did, we also can't forget the heroes in this case, like Glenda Cleveland, who went out her way to check on and to follow up on what may have happened to that 14-year-old child, Conrad. Have you guys watched the new Netflix series? What do you guys think about it? Were you surprised to learn the gruesome details of Jeffrey Dahmer? And were you more surprised to learn more about Glenda Cleveland and understand that there was somebody trying to... To, you know, help these victims and trying to get the police's attention only to be dismissed and ignored due to the racist antics of the Milwaukee police. So comment down below. Let me know what you guys think about this Netflix special. Also, let me know what you guys think about Glenda Cleveland herself. So make sure you guys leave a comment down below. Don't forget to hit that like button. Make sure you still subscribe. And thank you so much for watching. Have a good day.
Deuces. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity, so sir, your friends and your family. It's the Lovely Tea TV Show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the Lovely Tea TV Show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.